Today we are building a furniture project. This is part one. We're going to do the top of it. It's an outdoor table. It's made out of mahogany. It's got breadboard ends and X-braced legs and let's get started. We've got the top. We've got boards cut for the top. They're five feet long and they're a little under six inches, around five and three quarter wide. I've got quarter inch spacers, five of them to go between the boards and I'm getting a width with the spacers and the reason is I gotta cut the breadboard ends and I wanna cut those about an eighth over this measurement. So I'm bringing the boards onto my miter saw and I'm cutting them to the length, approximately the length uh, of what we're gonna need uh, to make the table. We're gonna square them up uh, later on at the table saw so we just we can use the miter saw it's not completely accurate the next step is to cut them to width the breadboard ends are going to be about three inches wide that's going to give me a breadboard slot about an inch and a half deep and so we're going to rip these boards to three inches wide I use the safety equipment even though it's a saw stop I try not to be uh, overly uh, secure. It's awful expensive to replace the brake and the blade and even though your finger gets saved, always use your safety guards. Now I'm using my crosscut sled to square up one end of the breadboard and then I am taking it and I am cutting it to length. I've made a mark I'm lining up the mark with the left side of the uh, cut in the crosscut sled. And I clamp the board in place, a uh, little extra bit of security uh, to make sure it doesn't slide while I'm making the cut. Now I'm marking the edges of where the slot is going to be in the breadboard. First thing I'm doing is marking the edge of the uh, of the slot on both sides and this is a great tool from Incra that you can use to, to mark your lines at a set distance over. Uh, just put the pencil in the hole and there it goes. I'm using a dedicated mortiser to cut the slot. It's a 3 8 inch bit I'm going to go along the length. I'm setting the depth here, one and a half inches down. Sorry for the poor viewing angle. Um, I'm going to set the depth stop, and then we're going to begin uh, cutting the mortises. Now what I'll do to center the mortise on the piece is I will run down the length of the piece, then I'll flip the board around and come back the other way. And what that does is that's going to center it which is what you want. You want it, it's got to be the right depth and it's got to be centered. If you don't have a dedicated mortiser, you could do this with a router, a uh, plunge router with a, with a guide. Now that the slot is cut, I'm measuring the depth that I have to cut away from the board so I can cut the shoulders. So I've, I've lined the saw blade up with the depth of the uh, edge left on the breadboard end and I'm going to cut the shoulders to make a tenon on the end of these boards. So that should, because the, the mortises are centered, this should allow me to have the board slide right in with no uh, no gaps and no edges. So I'm going to get both sides of the board on each end. So that's four cuts on each board. It's not like a traditional tenon where you're going to cut uh, the sides away. These are going to be full length except for the end boards. On the end boards I have to raise the blade up and I'm coming in about an inch. Uh, that way I have enough room for the slot for the board to expand and it also gives me a nice clean edge on the outside. You don't see the uh, the slot 
So we're just going to run it through vertically. But you only have to do the outside edge of the board and make sure that when you do the board, you run it through and flip it around and you don't do the opposite side. Um, once those are cut, I can then cut the uh, cheeks of the uh, tenon off at the bandsaw. I've set the fence at the same thickness uh, as the edge of the, uh, the mortise we cut in the breadboard end, and I run it in. It's actually a little heavy. Um, I tend to make these a little bit thicker than they need to be because it's a lot easier uh, when you go to fit them to just use a plane to bring it down to the thickness. And then on the end boards, I have to trim off that one inch of space to leave the gap. So there we go. We've got the board on a bench hook. We've got the breadboard end to see how it fits. And as you can see, it's a little bit too thick. So what we do now is we're going to use chisels and hand planes. Uh, this is a rabbiting block plane. It actually cuts right up to the edge. It makes it a lot easier uh, to get this to thickness because you're not leaving a gap. So uh, it's one of my heavily used planes and also a shoulder plane. Uh, sometimes my hand goes at a little bit of an angle and I use the shoulder plane to level it off. Uh, but the shoulder plane only does a very narrow piece. The other thing you want to do before you make your first cut is you want to chamfer the edge away from you. That'll keep the wood from splintering out when you make the cuts with the plane. So we're just going to run a couple of passes on each side. You want to make sure it's fairly even. We're going across the grain, so it's kind of difficult. If you have a low angle plane, it works a lot better. This is, I believe it's a standard angle plane, so it's, it's kind of tough to, it tends to peel away in uh, little bits. And what we'll do is we just keep going back and forth with the plane. Until we get a nice fit in the in the slot. Just tap it in with a block. It shouldn't take very much if it really required a lot of pounding. Um, you got to kind of let it go and, and do it a little more, but you do want a nice snug fit. And there we go, one down, and now we've got all the rest of them to do. All right, so we've got all the tenons cut. They're all fitted to the, to the breadboard ends, and now we're just about ready to glue it up. But first we want to put a 1 8 round over on the edges of the boards. And the reason for that is we can't do it once the table's put together, and the round over it does prevent a nice, uh, more presentable surface. We're also going to sand the inside edges of the boards ahead of time. We're going to actually finish them as well. Uh, it's very difficult to get finished down in that quarter inch gap. So we're going to sand these edges and, and put the finish on before we put the table together. So I'm just lining them up and applying a, an outdoor finish this happens to be a spar varnish, a polyurethane that's rated with UV protection for outdoor use. And I'm not using any stain. The mahogany actually looks beautiful with this finish on it as it is. All right, finish is dried. We're ready to glue. We're only going to glue the middle of each board. The reason for this is, it's out, especially being outdoors, the wood expands and contracts. So we're allowing these boards to expand individually. And that's why we have the quarter inch gap and that's why we left the gap at the edge of the uh, end boards so that they can expand in the gap. And that's why the breadboard is a little bit wider than the table itself. Um, this is winter time when this table is being made. 
it's very dry as the humidity uh, comes up in the summertime and it sits out in humid weather uh, it will expand and I'm not sure yet we'll see how far it expands I'm just using these pipe clamps to hold the breadboard on what we're also going to do um, is we're going to use dowels to peg them in place here I'm marking a line so that they're all on the same plane halfway in the tenon so three quarters of an inch up from the edge of the breadboard and then I marked each one on the center of the board now we will drill a hole straight through one note I probably should have clamped on a sacrificial board on the back to keep from uh, chipping out I was fairly lucky I didn't really get any chip out with this but that's always a possibility and now we're just going to glue these dowels in I've cut them to a little over the length of the thickness of it's 1.1 inches thick so the dowels I think are one and a quarter and I'm just using a block pound them down into the hole set them even as I can on one side and then later on we'll be able to cut off the protruding side on the back which we've done here and we're sanding them flush at this point now we can sand down the entire tabletop I sand it to 180 grit also sanding off any uh, finish that may have uh, pooled on on the surface that dripped around the sides when we finished them um, I was careful we didn't have too much of a problem but I had to get that stuff off too what I'm doing now is I'm applying epoxy to the ends of the dowels that is end grain even though they're mahogany dowels it's a good outdoor wood I like to protect them with some epoxy then I just sand the epoxy flush at this point I had sanded the table to 80 grit um, then I applied the epoxy and I also filled in any imperfections in the wood with epoxy and now I'm sanding it flush and I'll proceed with uh, 180 and 120 180 grit I only go as far as 180 I'm using a light here shining it across looking for any imperfections that I missed and I'll come back and I'll sand those and fix any imperfections we want to get a nice smooth finish on the mahogany and there you have it all sanded all glued up the top is now ready to go and we will uh, proceed in our next video with making the base which is uh, was kind of a good learning experience for me um, it had quite a few mortise and tenon joints in each end and angled mortise and tenons which I had never done before